What is the reverb? And how do you use it well when you try to orchestrate within a DAW? Hello, this is Sam. Really nice to see you here. So let's talk about reverbs and how to apply them to your orchestra when you work with a DAW. So this is a little longer video where I go into some detail about a reverb. I'm trying not to get too nerdy, but just to give you enough so that you feel like you can master the tools yourself when you work with the reverb. If there is a part that you feel like you already know, you can always skip ahead. I have sectioned the video so that it's easier to do so. But also think that it might be good to see the whole thing because I go through some things that makes it easier to understand the latter part of the video. And also, if there are things that you don't agree with, or you know things better, or anything, you have any tip you want to give us, don't be afraid to comment that, or work, uh, tell us in the comments so that we all learn more. And also wanted to say that I am working with Cubase and the stock plugins there this time, because it's easy and they're good enough. But I want you to make sure that these principles should work with any DAW or any plugin. So let's get going. What is a reverb? A reverb is basically sounds reflecting back from the walls. Isn't that an echo, someone might ask? Well, an echo is more of a clear repeat hello, of a sound, hello, hello. while reverb is more like many small echoes reflecting and reacting to the room the sound is in. Hello. Room, in this case, refers to any space. You could say an echo, which is created by the effect called delay, is a focused reaction, while reverb is an unfocused reaction. So why do you want a reverb? For many reasons. For example, to make the sound more natural. A completely dry sound meaning no reverb, doesn't really exist in nature, even though very short reverb times can feel like there is no reverb. But if you have ever recorded music or your own voice, you know that an untreated room can really destroy your recording, unless you are lucky and the room has the perfect natural reverb you need. So, most of us want a dry signal when we record, meaning as little natural reverb as possible, that we then apply a reverb to. Because that gives us more control and options of what kind of reverb we want. If the recording is too wet, meaning there is a lot of natural reverb, it will be very difficult to control this reverb. We also want a reverb to make it sound bigger, like it has more space. Or it could be to make it sound like all the instruments come from the same place. For example, if you have different libraries with different reverbs, if you put a reverb on top in a good way, it could sound like they're more coming from the same place. Reverb can also be used to make something sound further away, making your recording more dimensional. If you think of panning being left and right, a reverb can make the sound space more three-dimensional. A sound with more reverb sounds like it's further back. A recording with no reverbs tends to sound quite flat, like uh, all the instruments would be in the same place, playing in your face. Some orchestra libraries have a really nice reverb baked in into the recording. They probably have used a really nice famous hall in order to get that good orchestral sound. Now this is great because you don't have to work so much, you got a good sound immediately, but if you don't want that particular sound, then it can be quite hard to turn that off, so to speak, and put your own reverb on top. Most good sample libraries have the option of different mic positions that not only change the sound, but also the reverb time. The closer the mic, the less reverb. If you have one of those libraries that has quite a wet, reverbery sound, I wouldn't worry too much about adding new reverbs to them. At least not in the beginning, and especially if you're only using that library to create an orchestral sound. 
Now, these libraries are created to sound good from the start. They have the right room and the right mixing, so you can worry more about orchestral writing and less about technical details. Do I need a delay? Sure, why not? I mean, try it. But if you're going for that real, realistic orchestral sound, then maybe delays are not the best effect to use. Uh, delay is an excellent effect, but it's mostly used in pop production, maybe film also. But in pop, it's used heavily for guitars and vocals. different kinds of reverb plugins. The following is still quite a simplified view of reverbs and how to use them, but I just wanted to get you started at least. You can always discover more later on. Most reverbs today are either a convolution reverb or an algorithmic reverb. Convolution is, let's say, acoustic photography. So, a convolution reverb is capturing the sound of a room or an effect processor. This capture could also include an equalizer or the time and color of a specific room. So if you want it, let's say, to sound like you're playing in Taj Mahal, you could capture the reverb sound of that room and use it in a convolution reverb. Most convolution reverbs come with great presets and you can even find more online. So there is no real need to capture your own. Algorithmic reverbs is a way of creating a reverb, not being based on a particular room or space, where you could do pretty much whatever you want. Obviously, the reverbs we're talking about here are both digital, but to make an easier distinction, you could say that the convolution reverb is more of an analog sound and algorithmical reverbs are more of a digital sound. But it would also be wrong to say that. And today, newer plugins are more often a hybrid of the two, and you could pretty much do whatever you want with any of them. The easy version is, use convolution reverbs for creating realistic, real spaces, and algorithmic for sound design. Obviously, that is not the only truth on how to use these reverbs. You can use them any way you like. What do the controls mean? Most reverbs are divided into early reflection and tail. Early reflection is a short delay, usually within 100 milliseconds. It simulates the time it takes for the original sound to bounce back from a wall. This makes it sound like there is a bigger or smaller room. If you are in a really big room, it takes more time for the early reflection to come back to your ears. You could actually place different instruments in a virtual room by giving instruments different early reflections. I don't do this myself, but it could be fun to try. Tail is the biggest part of the reverb effect, what you hear the most. A huge tail is unnatural, but can create interesting effects. The material and shape in a room or a space affects the tail and early reflections. A cathedral with mostly stone floors and walls everywhere sounds very different from a big symphony hall, even if they happen to be the same size. In an algorithmical reverb, you normally have much more control over these parameters. Other controls that most reverbs have are Mix knob How much of the dry signal or the processed sound is heard? Dry is usually referred to as no reverb and wet to the reverb sound. Decay or time How long before the tail disappears? Depending on the reverb, this is sometimes the same as the tail. But you can have long tails and short decays, for example, which might seem counterintuitive, but it can create different sounds 
working with these two in various ways. Some reverbs also have simple EQs, and sometimes they are called damping as well. It could be helpful to EQ your reverbs sometimes. Often this is done to not interfere too much with the original sound, making sure the frequencies don't compete too much, or to achieve different flavors. Uh, perhaps you want a high frequency sound only, making the reverb feel less dense. If your reverb doesn't have this, it can easily be achieved in your DAW. Some reverbs have quite a few more knobs, but knowing these essentials, you can come a long way, and it will be easier to understand the rest of the knobs and levers. And in most cases, playing with the presets will be enough for most people. Different rooms? Most reverbs have the categories halls, chambers, rooms, and plates. Today, most reverbs have even more categories like, for example, cathedral, studio, or arena, but most reverbs still categorize the size in these main categories I mentioned. Now, the way of thinking about it is bigger and smaller size. The main difference between these is the tail and the early reflection, or how long you hear the reverb and how big the room sounds. Halls have a longer tail, being the bigger space, and rooms a shorter one. But, for example, cathedral is bigger, and there are reverb effects that go on for longer. Plate is more of an artificial reverb, with a fast early reflection with a bigger tail. Another common example of a more unnatural reverb, often used with drums, is what is called a gated reverb. This is a reverb with a long tail, but the tail is turned off almost immediately, like a gate effect making it sound big without a long tail. Is reverb an insert or a send effect? Well, an insert effect means that it affects the whole channel before anything else is done to the channel. All effects, changes that are after in the signal chain will be affected by the reverb. Most of the time, people don't have reverbs as an insert, but it is absolutely possible especially if your reverb has a mix knob. Because in most cases, you don't want the reverb 100% if you use it as an insert. Reverbs used as an insert are mostly for special effects or if you want an instrument to have a completely different reverb than the others. But most reverbs should be used as a send, especially when you write for an orchestra and or you're trying to make the instrument sound like they're in the same place. A send is when a reverb is on its own channel. This is good for many reasons. You have full control over the original sound and the reverb sound without them affecting each other. It is easier to EQ them differently, have different volumes, and you could add effects more to the reverb if you wanted and go insane with the complexity. You could even have one track mono and the other stereo if you wanted. If your reverb has no EQ, and you need to make those changes, your DAW can do this for you, if you have the reverb as a send. Simply apply an EQ on that channel. But the send option is especially good on resources. Having a dedicated reverb on each channel could make your computer complain quite a bit, especially if you have a large orchestra playing. With a send reverb, you simply send all the tracks that needs a reverb to that reverb channel. So you only need one reverb in that case. How should you use a reverb for an orchestra? First, check if your library already comes preloaded with a reverb in the samples. If the samples are very wet, it doesn't make much sense adding a reverb because there is a tendency to be too muddy if you do so. Of course, experiment, but if this is the case, the best use for a reverb would be to add it to instruments that do not belong to the library you're using and you need a reverb just to match the other library. If your library is fairly dry or you have the option to make it so, it could be enough to just place a reverb on the master bus if that reverb has a mix knob or just create a send reverb and have all the instruments sent to that channel. If you're writing for orchestra music, I would say the easiest thing you could do 
is actually to use a convolution reverb. Find the room you think matches the orchestra the best and then use the mix knob until it sounds good. If you're using a send, then the mix should be on 100% and you should use the channel volume instead to mix in the reverb. Should I worry about mixing different reverbs together? Short answer, absolutely not. If it sounds good, it sounds good and it doesn't matter how you got there. I wonder if anyone can hear or even cares about there being different reverbs in the same recording. The idea that you have to match all the reverbs perfectly or it won't sound good is a myth. In fact, a lot of producers combine different reverbs in order to create even more dimensional spaces. For example, you could have a room sound to make the instrument sound a little bit bigger. And then maybe underneath that, you could have a chamber sound to make the tail bigger. And then underneath that, you could have actually even have a hall as well to make the space even bigger. And then you can mix these reverbs to sound in different channels, have different EQs. That's quite advanced, obviously. So I would start with one reverb and really know that. And then just try and play to see what happens. What if I have several different reverbs at the same time? What are the best reverb plugins? Well, you might be familiar with my approach or my way of thinking. But still, having said that, of course, there are some great reverbs out there. Some of them ridiculously expensive, uh, especially the hardware units. But here's my point. Most DAWs today have great reverbs included that are good enough on a professional level. They really are. And if they don't sound good enough, it is most likely because you don't know how to use them well. And more importantly, you need to work on your music. That's what really matters, to create good music that you then can use pretty good reverbs on. I mean, if you... One day have great songs and lots of money made from your music, then maybe you could add another 5% of polish by having the best reverb on the market, if you think it's worth it. But I say it isn't, really. You can create great results with the reverbs you have in your DAW. And think about this. If you have a really bad song, uh, a reverb is not going to save you. I mean, of course, you can mask some problems with a reverb, but instead, actually, most reverbs tend to give focus to what is not working. Think about it. Uh, a really bad song is going to sound way worse with a, bad re uh, with a good reverb because now you will hear it more. You will hear it for longer. Anyway, having said all this, here are some reverbs you could think about but probably shouldn't buy. Actually, if you own Cubase, those are really good reverbs. If you own Complete by Native Instruments, those are some excellent reverbs. And if you have the subscription by East West, the Spaces reverb is a very good convolution reverb. Other good ones are Seventh Heaven by Liquid Sonics, Altiverb, FabFilter Pro R, Reverbs by Valhalla. Reverbs by Sound Toys and H Reverb by Waves. And another thing, most of us don't have the speakers, the room, the experience to really know the difference of a good and a bad reverb. I mean, a huge difference worth several thousands of dollars. I want to say reverbs are very, very important. You must learn how to use them well. But the top priority is your musical skill in my mind, if you want to be creative and create more music. Go for that first, then add reverbs when you need them. Save your money.
Okay, that's it for today. I really hope you found this video useful and helpful in any way. If it helped you in some way, then perhaps hit that like button. You could even subscribe if you want more videos like these. And don't forget that bell button if you are new here as well. So if you have any great tips for the rest of us or know something I don't or have a great tip about reverbs, please feel free to put that down in the comments. Maybe you can show us how you use reverbs as well. That would be greatly appreciated. So um, I would like to say Merry Christmas as well. And if I don't see you before then, Happy New Year's. And I hope you all are doing great. This is Samuel signing out. Take care and I'll see you soon.